Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Confirmation 2012. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us here today. Uh, we're people of the book. We're people of the Bible. Uh, that's what Christians do. We have a book, and we know that your word is spoken to us through that book. Be with us today as we think about the Bible, learn more about it, what kind of book it is, where it came from. And also be with us as we consider how you have created everything that exists, including each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, today we are going to talk about the Bible and the very beginning stuff that you find in the Bible, which is the story of creation. Uh, we're going to talk about God creating and making everything. And what does that mean with science? How do, how do the Bible and science connect? Uh, because they're, they're not at odds with each other. We're going to show you today how the Bible and science get along very well. And, uh, but first, before we do that, we want to look a little bit about what the Bible is and uh, how it came to be and the important things that we're going to be finding out in it. Uh, the Bible tells the amazing story of God's love for creation and specifically for you. He wants to be in a... Relationship. Relationship. Pastor Harold, there's that great big word that, that Pastor Harold gave to us last week. The word we're going to find throughout the whole Bible, the whole idea of the Bible is God wants to be in relationship with you. And the big question will be as we go through this year and as we go through this semester, what's the Bible got to do with me? And so every time we're going to have a lesson, we're going to think about, okay, what does it mean that there were these people... Uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. What does it mean that we've got uh, uh, a woman, Sarah, who was married to Abraham and they had these kids? And, and what does it mean that uh, Noah went into an ark and there was this big flood? Uh, we're going to look each time at the Bible stories and figure out what those Bible stories have to do with us. Now, an interesting thing about the Bible, you all have a Bible that you got, and we're going to be using it a little bit today, uh, but you may have uh, at your houses, maybe, this is an old, old Bible. I had it when I went to seminary, and I've got the covers coming off, and I've got it marked all over the place. I have markings and notes to myself because it was my, my study Bible. So it's okay if you want to write in your Bibles as we go through the year, if you want to underline favorite verses, if there are things you want that that. Matt or Pastor Harold or I say that you think that is the wisest thing I've ever heard. You may want to write it down right there in your own Bible. But there are in the Bible, there are two parts. There are two testaments, or the other word for that is covenant. Remember, covenant means relationship that God makes with his people. So the Bible is divided into an old part that is written in Hebrew. And in case you've never seen Hebrew, I brought a Hebrew Bible. You start in the back. Hebrew goes backwards from the rest of books. But you, and you start on this side of the page and read this direction. Do you go it's, from bottom to, or bottom to top? Uh, like, no, actually, you, know, you do start at the top. But you do go backwards <laughs> from what you do. So you would start, yes, you would start on this side. It starts one, two, three, goes backwards like that. And you start on at the opposite side of the page. These are all the squiggles. Each of those are have little lines. And, and the, the lines and the drawings are consonants. And the little dots at the bottom are the vowels. There's for our people watching by, by YouTube. So, when, when you pick up a Bible like you've got, someone's gone through a lot of work because they have read it in Hebrew and translated it into English. And, we're, even though this is a Hebrew Bible, it's written in the, that's the language it was written in, a long time ago it was written on scrolls. They didn't have paper, they didn't have books. They had these scrolls of parchment, and they would they had to hand write it because they didn't have printing, and so and we don't have any of the originals. We have some that go back to the early centuries, but there are no scrolls of either the Old or New Testament from the original writings. They were all copied down over the years, and you know. Three or four hundred years would go by and the old ones deteriorated and, and so they copied new ones down and, and they just kept copying over and over. In Greek, this is a Greek Bible, it, it reads 
sort of like English. I mean, it reads the same direction. Greek, uh, this is kind of hard to see, but uh, Greek is a little bit, it's a newer language, and it doesn't have the squiggly lines like Hebrew, but it has, uh, uh, some of these letters will look kind of the same. You'll see some letters that uh, you would recognize, and you'll, we'll, maybe I'll show that to your group a little bit later. But, well, the, uh, there's an X, which is a chi, and there are O's and uh, E's and U's. So some of them kind of, kind of like. So the New Testament is written in what language? Greek. 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 Old Testament written in Hebrew. Hebrew. Now, sometime we're going to give you a test. And the thing that I'm going to want you to remember, and I'm going to ask you on your test, how many books are in the Old Testament. How many letters in the word old? Three. O-L-D, three. three. How many letters in the word testament? Nine. nine. So, the Old Testament has 39 books. There's your memory trick. Okay, but you say, hey, Pastor Casey, the word New Testament has the same letters, three in new, nine in testament, this time multiply it together. Three times nine equals 27. There are 27 books in the New Testament. Can anybody add together 27 and 39 Ooh. real quick for a total of, yes. 60. Yes, you're getting there, you're getting close. Yes, 66. There are 66 books. And even though we get to pick it up like, like one book, it's really a library of books. Uh, here's in the... Uh, uh, first of all, the New Testament came along. Oh, it was called Hebrew Scriptures. It wasn't called Old Testament. It was the Hebrew Scriptures because it existed a long time before the New Testament. And they had all these books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Uh, then we, we sort of rearranged it. Christians rearranged it into the Old Testament. All these different books. And then the New Testament came along with the Gospels and letters and writings that people had. So, so when you think about the Bible... It's really a whole library of books written over a period of, you know, a thousand, over a thousand years. It didn't just come into being suddenly. There were people over a thousand years that wrote the Bible. Now, guess what? By, well, we'll give you two or three months, but you are going to memorize all the books in the Old Testament. Wow. And next semester in the New Testament, Pastor Harold, are there... Give us three that are really easy. We, we, need, we need to start out with some really easy memory, memory tricks. You've got to change the page, though. You're kidding. Right, we'll one, two, and three. We'll go back to that one. This okay. is a library. So, we're going to learn um, the books of the Bible over the course of confirmation, but I thought I'd get you guys going on a few easy ones, because it's always good to start with easy ones. So, what's the first book? You know what? What's the last one? Oh. Revelation. Revelation. You know, Raise your hand. No last one there. So Revelation. And then I'll give you one other one for today. If you get your Bible and you pull it open right in the middle. Psalms. Psalms. You come to, you come to Psalms. Sometimes you pop those Proverbs, but Psalm, Proverbs, those are right there in the middle. So you know at least three or four books right off the bat. And then we'll fill in the blanks and we'll have a I think. Pastor Casey has a sheet hand out today to help work on the Old Testament books for you guys for homework. That's right. In case you ever wondered, can we have confirmation homework? No. Yes. Today we're going to have a list for you. Here's what I need. And I'll tell you again at the very end. But we're going to have you go home, write all 39 of the Old Testament books, and bring it back by next week. But I'll give that to you oh, just a little bit later. Like the but, but, and then you'll use that list to start yeah. memorizing all the different it? books. I know uh, it's all grouped. Okay. You expect that you memorize the library. Okay, go back to So, remember? New Testament, Old Testament, whole library of books. Oh, this is pretty easy. Does anyone know the first four books of the New Testament? Let's say it together. Matthew, Mark, Psalm, and Revelation. And those three books that you learned just a little bit ago, the first book is Genesis. The last book is Revelation. 
the middle book is Psalms. Psalms. Excellent. How in the world did the Bible come into being? Who wrote the Bible? God or humans? So, the Bible. The Holy Bible. Yes, the Holy Bible. The Word of God. You've seen it. Your pastor talks about it. You may have even read some of it. But where did it come from? Did God just decide one day to self-publish an autobiography? Conjured the whole thing out of thin air and sent it to Earth to bless all humanity? Heads up! Ooh! Ooh leatherette! Or was the Bible written by humans, who tried their best to guess at what God would want to say? Two chickens does not equal that of a hamster. Thus saith the Lord. No, 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 no. God wouldn't say that. What about a marmot? Christians believe that the Bible is inspired by God. But what does that mean? If you look at the meaning of the word inspired first, you have in, which means in. Really? And spire, which means to breathe. So, inspired by God essentially means to be breathed into by God. That's weird. So, basically, what happened is, a long time ago, a bunch of people were chosen by God to be breathed into, or inspired, with God's message. In the Old Testament, these people were called prophets. The people who shared the good news of Jesus were called apostles. And these people went all over exclaiming God's message. And the things they were saying was some really amazing stuff. At some point it crossed someone's mind that all of the stuff these inspired people were talking about should be written down. So they did. They started carefully writing all of this stuff down and refining and editing and transcribing all of it over several hundred years until they had a massive pile of this really amazing stuff. Oh. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. You see, there wasn't just one person writing this stuff down. And while most of it was truly inspired, some of it was, well... Not so inspired. And the cantaloupe shall be cast aside lest you be consumed by your own armpits. <laughs> this left the young church with a big problem. How would they sort out all of the inspired stuff from the not so inspired stuff? <laughs> this is how the process of biblical canonization came into existence. What is canonization, you may ask? Canon a what? Well, that's where they took a wall. Okay. And a lot of glue, and they put the glue on the wall, then they took all the writings and stuffed them into a cannon and shot the cannon at the wall. And everything that stuck to the wall went into the Bible. Really? No. Canonization was a process guided by God in which church councils were formed to decide what writings were truly inspired by God. These councils prayerfully researched and analyzed and sifted through the early Christian writings using specific tests and definitions to establish their credibility. So they would ask important questions like, is this writing actually being used by the Christian community? Another key question they'd ask is, was this written by an apostle? Or a close associate of an apostle? Or Aunt Gertrude's son-in-law's stepsister's cousin? <laughs> These kinds of tests and definitions helped to establish what books were a true witness to an active, moving God and the life of Jesus Christ and should be included in what we now know as the Bible. The Holy Bible. Written by humans, inspired by God. Sweet.